Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about covert prepping and the best way to store your prepper pantry. So I came across this really interesting website, calamityjanet.com, and she has some interesting thoughts on covert prepping. And I wanted to just kind of run through a couple of the articles on her site, give you my thoughts, and I definitely want to hear your thoughts as well. So be sure to leave them in the comments. This is Rebecca from Simple Suburban Living. Okay, so first of all, she, you can see here it says, hide your stash. And she shows this picture of a prepper pantry that looks like it's in a basement. And it says, you're doing it wrong. And she says, there's a lot of preppers out there who are only too happy to show off their caches and stashes, either on the website or YouTube. And she admits that she's, you know, pot calling the kettle black. And usually the tour includes a spare bedroom, basement, or garage that's stacked floor to ceiling with five gallon buckets or wall to wall shelves piled with goods. I always cringe when I see people prepping in this misguided manner. There's a lot of problems with prepping this way, which I'm only too happy to relate. Okay, so first of all, her first reason that she gives is that if somebody stops by your house and gets an eyeful of your pantry, whether it's the plumber, electrician, babysitter, whatever, first they're gonna think you're crazy, but then after SHTF, they're gonna remember where you live. So second, if you have all your food stored in one handy location, it makes it simple for starving vandals and desperate looters to walk right in and help themselves loading up their trucks and wiping you out in one easy afternoon. So before I go further, I wanna say that I've, I do not have room to have a huge prepper pantry. I don't have a spare bedroom. I don't have a basement, all of that. And so I am one of those that I've got a small pantry and I'm putting things in bins and sticking them under beds and stuff like that. That. Okay, so I've always kind of envied people who have either the spare bedroom or the basement or both or big walk-in closets or what have you that they're able to use for their prepper pantry. Second, I personally, and maybe this is me being naive, but I'm personally not too worried about people coming in and robbing me, me of my, you know, canned green beans and tuna and stuff like that. Now, again, maybe that's me being naive I do know if things got bad enough, that could happen. But I'm prepping more for economic collapse or for shortages like we've had with COVID and things like that. I'm not too worried personally about, you know, <laughs> just people coming in with guns and taking my food, okay? Now, she does make a couple of other points, though, that I do think fit even for someone like me. Um, she says, if your stuff is sitting on a shelf in its original packaging and a single bag of rice or box of macaroni gets infected with grain moths or weevils, that infection is going to spread throughout all your rice and macaroni and everything else. I do think that's valid if you have everything together and there is any type of infestation, it's going to spread to all of your preps. Okay, in an earthquake, everything will be dumped onto the floor into a huge mess, especially if you store a lot of stuff in glass jars. So I, I live in California, so earthquakes are a real uh, potential problem, and I do can, so I, I do store things in glass jars. Really, it depends on the severity of an earthquake. It can hit one part of your house more than another or what have you, but if there's a really severe earthquake, it seems like anywhere you had your stuff stored in your home, this could happen. The next one I think is a good point as well. Broken plumbing, shattered windows, or holes in roofs anywhere above your preps will allow water to drench everything below the break, ruining it with mold. And I do think that that is a valid thing if there is some type of water leakage, water damage, and it happens above where all of your preps are, everything could be ruined. Okay, and then if you have to bug out in a hell of a hurry and you want to pack as much food as possible, you've got to round up umpteen gillion sturdy boxes or containers first. Now, personally, I don't know what that has to do with having all of your preps in one place. I think in some ways having all of them in one place would make it easier for you to gather things up. Okay, now she says it's far safer to use basic principles of covert prepping. And I've been a prepper for many years, blah, blah, blah. Um, there isn't a single place anywhere in my house, not a cabinet, cupboard, closet, bedroom, or basement where anyone could find a single clue that I'm a stockpiler and I have a hefty hoard of goods stashed in my home. 
So that is kind of interesting is that anyone that comes into your home, whether it's a neighbor or um, a plumber or what have you, would have any idea that she's a prepper. So that's kind of interesting. So I want to show you some of the creative ways that she stores food and water and then share some of my thoughts on those. So first, let's look at her prepper pantry. All right, so she calls this a proper prepper's pantry. And what she did is she has a bed frame in an empty bedroom and you can see that she put these boards across the bottom of the bed frame. And then she puts food inside of the different sections of the bed frame. She put all of the grains in the middle as she says, everything made of grain goes in the middle to discourage grain-loving insects from inviting themselves in. These grains will end up being totally surrounded by a sea of canned goods. This is the best possible place to store canned goods where the temperature is constant but cool and there's no chance of any sort of moisture. Okay, now you can see how she's starting to fill up the bed, uh, underneath the bed, the frame, with canned goods. And then here it is complete. She has all of her canned goods, dry goods, full underneath the bed. And she says there's gobs of tiny things poked into the little spaces between the cans, cigarette lighters, packs of gum, matchbooks, tea bags, rolls of lifesaver candies, etc. If there was even a quarter inch of available space on top of the cans, I used it to store flat things like fruit leather, soup packets, lots of extra Ziploc baggies, pouches of gravy, seasoning packets. Every square inch of space is used up. Okay, so what she did next is she put boards down over the canned goods and other items. It looks like she, yeah, she actually screws the boards to the frame, not only for stability, but also so that vandals will have to have a screwdriver and a lot of time in order to break into this pantry. And you can see here's where it's pretty much done. Bed frame all assembled and headboard in place as well. A year's supply of food for two people is totally out of sight and protected. And then she also is into storing lumber so that if there's uh, any type of catastrophe, she has a stash of lumber so that she can, for example, board up windows and things like that. Okay, and Again, she's putting more shelving, more, more wood basically over the top. And then she's alternating layers of wool blankets, tarps, and air mattresses because storing these things here is far better than having them take up the limited space I have available in my closets and basements. All right, and then finally, this is what it looks like. She says, in the mattress, the sheets, the blankets, and the pillows, and here you have a perfect and proper prepper's pantry. Do you have any idea how soundly I sleep knowing what I'm sleeping on? So first I have to give her props because she has a ton of stuff stored all under her bed and it's very secure. Now the challenge that I have with this is that she cannot get, she herself cannot get into any of this stuff easily. She can, but she has to of course take all that stuff off, all the boards off and so on. I personally, believe in having a working pantry and I like to use the food that I store and then replenish it. That would be very difficult to do in with this type of setup. Okay, so that's the biggest problem that I have with it. To me, if you were going to do something this extreme, it would be better to buy the long-term survival food and stored in there. So I'm talking like the cases of food from, you know, Augustin Farms or Mountain House or whatever, the ones with a really long shelf life, and then doing all the tarps and things like that and putting it under there. Okay, but anyway, I wanted to show this because I do think it's, it's quite amazing and interesting what she did. I just don't know about making it secure to the point that even it would, it would be even hard for her to get to it. All right, now let's look at under the bed water storage. Okay, so she did a simple, uh, a similar thing here. Under one bed in my home, I store food. Under the other bed in my home, I store water. This is because I was spooked after a small earthquake and so on. 
So she has all of this water storage under her bed. Now that I actually think is kind of a good idea because you don't need to rotate it out a lot. She did very similar to what she did on the, the first bed that I showed you. And so that I think makes perfect sense. I think it's a great idea. And uh, it sa she says a dust ruffle hides the bottled water from view. So that also kind of gives me the impression that she could get to the water if needed. So that I thought was a, a really nice idea. And you can see how much water she can store under the bed. There is another creative idea that she had, and this is hoard and seek is what she called it. Now she has this armoire and you can see that behind it, she's put all of these canned goods. And so she says, but wait, behind the ordinary old fashioned armoire, a stash of canned goods conveniently stored in a temperature stable environment, free from the danger of getting wet or freezing solid with a stack of duct tape cans exactly as high and as wide as the armoire. Several hundred cans take up only a three inch strip of the bedroom floor. So again, I thought that was kind of interesting, but it kind of goes back to the same challenge of actually getting to the food and using it. I suspect that her whole prepping philosophy centers around a really extreme, extreme uh, issue and wanting to have food stored, again, not getting access to it regularly, not rotating the food out, just putting it in there and, in case there's some type of big catastrophe. Okay, here's another thing that she shows. An ordinary closet constructed using two by fours forming the frame and paneling forming the exterior. On the interior side of the closet, there's plenty of room for canned goods in between the posts that form the frame. It's another perfect environment for long-term storage of canned goods. Next, let's get them hidden from view. And you can see that she puts boards to cover them up. And so again, it's a very creative way to store food. It is a way to keep it hidden. It is a way to keep it safe, but it also would be difficult to access and to rotate out. So my personal thought is I love some of her ideas. I love the way that she has stored a lot of food in a small space. I do agree that it's good to have your food storage spread out so that if there was ever a problem such as water leaking, it'd be great to have it in different areas. I'm just not so sure about storing it in such a way that it's difficult for even you to access it. But let me hear your thoughts. Do you think that her method is the right method or a method that you should use? Do you think it's bad to use just a spare bedroom or a basement or that type of thing, uh, one big area for all of your food storage? Or do you think it's good to spread it out? So I would love to hear your thoughts. Please share them in the comments below. And I'd also appreciate it if you would like this video. And if you haven't already done so, if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.